Okay, welcome back. So, we continue with the module 3, the inorganic chemical industries that is part 2. So, we have seen the production of chlorine, we have also seen the production of phosphoric acid, these are the two basic inorganic based chemicals. Now, we will see, we will now focus our attention on what is another important chemical based chemical, inorganic based chemical I would say that is soda ash. So, this current lecture will focus on the production of soda ash. So, we will see both aspects, the thermodynamic aspects, the reaction aspects and then the flow sheet and we also discuss the various flow schemes. So, what I will do, I will just introduce first the regarding the soda ash in general and what are the types they are available, the ores. Then we will discuss about the physical and chemical properties of soda ash, many of you are aware of it when it is used. Then the two main processes which has been used industrially, the previously they are were using Leblanc process and then it has been replaced by the Solvay's process. So, Leblanc process actually what happens is it is uh, some uh, named after a in our inventor. So, these are some issues regarding uh, the byproducts that is why it was not preferred. Slowly the, the improved process was formed, this is called the Solvay's process. This is made after the inventor named as Ernest Solvay. So, this Ernest Solvay is something which is uh, they have these two different cycles. So, the amount of raw materials are cheap for Solvay's process and byproducts formation is also less. That is why this actually have replaced the Leblanc process. So, what is soda ash? Soda ash is an alkali chemical refined from the mineral trona ore. So, the trona ore means uh, you have sodium carbonate but this sodium carbonate may not be attached to one carbonate ion, it may be attached to many other carbonate ions. So, you may have several sodium atoms attached to carbonate. So, based on that they are sometimes known as uh, what you called as sesequated, sesequated carbonate. So, we will see that, but prominently from the ore what we need to get is the sodium carbonate. The sodium carbonate may be hydrated, may not be hydrated. If it is hydrated, and because we know that if it is hydrated that the one uh, sodium will be replaced by hydrogen. So, NaHCO3 it becomes. So, it is produced in large quantities from sodium chloride and limestone by the Solvay's process. So, this is the main process which we will discuss. The raw materials are sodium chloride and limestone. So, soda ash is a weak acid that is slightly soluble in ethanol and insoluble in alcohol. Since it is slightly soluble in ethanol, Leblanc actually used some of the glycols to dissolve this. So, we will discuss this later. So, let us see as I told you the sodium carbonate is obtained as 3 hydrates and as the anhydrous salt. Anhydrous salt means there is no water component in it. If it is a hydrate then it will have a water component. So, for example, you have this sodium carbonate as a structure like this, you have the carbonate ion in the center, then you have sodium ion beside it. When you have NaHCO3 what happens is? you have one sodium ion getting replaced by hydrogen, this hydrogen atom and thus you have this sodium bicarbonate. Okay. So, this is way how it is actually takes place. So, but there are some other, but the ore, ore name is here, the ore name is sodium sesquicarbonate. So, if I write down, it is the name is sodium sesqui. carbonate. So, this is the ore, this is the ore from which sodium carbonate is mined. Okay. So, this is also called as trona, trona ore, T R O N A, trona. Fine. So, the structure is similar to this, the only thing is uh, you have, uh, let us say you have this structure where you have O minus, you have O H here, this is one of them then you have the another which is O, another one where it is not replaced and then uh, you may have three sodium atoms together. Na plus you have three, three of them together. So, this is some sort of rough structure for the ore from where it is mined. So, this is the initial raw material, this is the final two products are obtained from here. Okay. So, uh, this is also called as trisodium hydrogen dicarbonate. So, it is called trisodium 
hydrogen bicarbonate trisodium hydrogen dicarbonate di carbonate okay so moving ahead so you have this uh, now you can see you have that this as the ore so this is the ore from here you have to mine it and get this the ore and from mining you go solve a process to get this sodium carbonate the sodash or sodium bicarbonate so let us go ahead so now let us see where are they used the application of sodash so primarily if you know uh, sodash is very useful for making of glass because the sand particles are of similar size of sodash because this sodash also of different type one is the low dense one is the high dense so low dense high dense high dense is the one which is mixed with sand it is used in the glass industries it is also used for making soaps and detergents it is used for water treatment because this sodium dihydrogen this sodium carbonate sodium carbonate if it is treated with water so it helps in the purification of water samples for making paper then also for the removal of flue gases such as pollutant gas such as sulfur dioxide in power station so it has number of uses so that's why this is a inorganic based chemical so you have these three process leblanc process then trona process and the solvay process so if we see where they are used the so heavy dose soda ash and light soda ash so heavy is the density is around close to 800 g per cc so you have it used for the manufacture of chemicals metallurgical materials then detergents 20% usage of heavy soda ash in this area then 25% uh, is around flat glasses glass fiber or other glass materials and the remaining are all used for the make manufacture of glass containers okay so here was the use of soda ash because glass containers because of the similarity in the size with the silica particles sand particles okay now for the light soda ash at some different uses so for example light soda ash is used for the brine treatment and water purification it may be also be used for food drinks detergents textiles because we know this sometimes it is also used as an antacid to help uh, relieve the symptoms then uh, heavy chemicals manufacture heavy chemicals as uh, like chromates phosphates you can always manufacture these chromates and phosphates through this light soda ash okay so let us see this process of leblanc process so before that let us study the physical properties of soda ash so as baking soda sodium bicarbonate is a white powder with a specific gravity of 2.16 so when heated in air over 55 degrees celsius if it is heated in air so what happens it decomposes so obviously if it decomposes releasing carbon dioxide and water and creating sodium carbonate so what is this reaction so it will be nhco3 if you heat them if you heat them it will form na2co3 that is a soda ash then co2 plus h2 so let us balance these so if you see of two sodiums if i put here two here so i think this is balanced right two hydrogen is two two is hydrogen and then the two carbon atoms two carbon atoms oxygen is six seven so you have five six oxygen atoms yeah six so it's balanced so this is what happens when you heat it in air above 55 degrees celsius so as you see from this reaction because co2 is a gas it escapes so it is a source of carbon dioxide so yeah, that's why you see these are sometimes used as nhco3 as in the fire extinguisher and is also an essential component of baking powder it is used in medicine to neutralize excessive stomach acidity and in industry to control the alkalinity of the sodium carbonate okay numerous mineral springs contains this naturally and this is usually made by comparing sodium carbonate with water and so i mean the reverse reaction is also possible this one because in the mineral springs it has combines it naturally because it can combine sodium carbonate with water and carbon dioxide to form the sodium bicarbonate so these are the properties of soda ash or i can say sodium bicarbonate so in the first process which we will focus is a leblanc process the entire process will follow three steps essentially it is two step the first step 
and two second step. The second step is actually broken. So, the second step is a series type of reaction. So, what is the first step? The first step here is sodium chloride is mixed with concentrated sulfuric acid and combined to produce sodium sulfate. This is the reaction which happens. So, sodium chloride is mixed with sulfuric acid to form sodium sulfate plus HCl. Now, what they do is they will take this sample out. This is the cake sample. They will take the sample out and then in the presence of limestone and coal that is coke, it is reduced. This has been done so as to prevent the formation of cyanide. So that is why the coal is used here to reduce the this cake's mixture. Okay. So, what happens? A set of two reactions occur. What happens is first the sodium sulphate is reduced with the coal in the presence of limestone to form sodium sulphite. So, sulphate is converted to sulphite. So, it is reduced. Reduction of sulphate to sulphite is the first step which takes place along with the evolution of the CO2 gas. Then what happens? This sodium sulphite reacts with the limestone which is there with the coal to form sodium carbonate which is the soda ash and calcium sulphite. Now, what is to be done is they will put it with water, they mix this entire sample with water, evaporate it because this sodium carbonate is not soluble in this. So, what happens is they will be taken out as the precipitate. Then that is extracted and the remaining entire things which is remaining is called as black ash. So, after the evaporation of this sodium carbonate, so precipitate, you get the precipitate and this precipitate take out, the remaining part is called as black ash that is calcium sulphide. Okay. So, this was the process which was tried out by Leblanc. Now, let us see the trona process. So, as I told you the trona ore is of the formula Na2CO3 NaC. It is similar which I discussed 3, 4 slides back. So, you have carbonate ion, 1 bicarbonate ion and 3 sodium atoms. So, this is trisodium, so trisodium hydrogen dicarbonate just now which I discussed. So, what happens is if this type of mixture, this is a trona ore around 45 percent sodium soda ash is already present, 36 percent plus 50 percent water plus impurities. Now, there are two ways to extract the soda ash. The first method, the trona ore is calcined. Calcined means you are decomposing the ore. It is decomposed to form impure soda ash. So, once it forms the impure soda ash, what you do? You prepare a solution mixture of this impure soda ash prepare a mother liquor and then you take out the entire soluble component, filter it out and then do for the post processing. This is called a monohydrate process. Second process what they do is they use the wet calcination. So, wet calcination means what they do is they will calcine not in the presence of heat, but they will do it in the presence of some component which is soluble in water. Most of the time it is glycols which is soluble in water. So, that is called wet calcination. So, the conditions are less severe while the conditions are more severe in monohydrate. Okay. So, this is the way they do it. So, now let us see the monohydrate process. So, what is the monohydrate process? The trona, the ore first is crushed. So, this is the ore. The ore here is crushed into fine particles, then calcination occurs. So, what does happen in calcination? So, the calcination what it does is it will uh, actually produce impure soda ash. Okay. It will produce the impure soda ash. So, the impure soda ash is produced. So, it means what are the reaction? This usually takes place around 160 to 200 degrees Celsius. So, you produce soda ash. So, what are the products here formed? That is Na2CO3. So, what you do in calcination is you heat it up to 160 to 200 degrees Celsius, you get impure soda ash. So, what does this impure soda ash? You have also this Na2, so you have Na2CO3, Na2CO3 plus CO2 plus H2O. Okay. So, CO2 will escape. So, what you do? You have this as a desired product, this is called impure soda ash. Then you add water, you dissolve all this here in the dissolution process. So, in the dissolution process, what you do? You dissolve all there. So, you prepare, I mean, you what you do is you send it to a 
let us say you this water I have written but make it simplify, but it is not water, it is having some mother liquid already of soda ash. So, we will like to take out this soda ash which will make it soluble. So, then what you do this clarification and filtration what it does is it separates out the soluble and insoluble fraction. A soluble fraction is the soda ash fraction, insoluble is so, uh, we can say that these two if I want to say these are called agitation tanks. Okay. So, in this what they do is, so they will dissolve the soda ash. So, what are the soluble impurities in soda ash? Soluble impurities, so if I see the soluble impurities, so let us say if I want to take this part the clarification and filtration, clarification and filtration. just discuss these two steps because it is important. In this they will dissolve the soda ash which is present along with the mother liquid dissolve soda ash and also dissolve the soluble impurities. What are those? Soluble impurities are sodium chloride and sodium sulphate. Okay. So, these are all soluble impurities. Once they do that they go to the carbon treatment. Now, what is then if this is a soluble what is the insoluble part? The insoluble part the insoluble one I will write here. So, just to make sure this is a part. So, insoluble part is in this case it is it may be shale because you are taking the ore. So, it may be shale, it may be clay or it may be such complex salts containing CoCO3. Okay. CoCO3 salts, CoCO3 salts, these are the insoluble. So, you separate them in filtration, first clarification you dissolve this and then separation, then filtration, then you go for carbon treatment. Now, carbon means why I am telling carbon treatment because uh, you have applied calcination, there may be some carbon particle also. So, we reduce them, okay. so you reduce them, so you add activated carbon, you take out those, I am sorry not reduce, you dissolve them through activated carbon. So, what you do is uh, you remove the soluble, remove the remove the soluble organic compounds ok. So, then uh, you are left with what is only this the soda ash mother liquid solution. Okay. So, what after you remove the soluble organic compounds, you remove the insoluble part because this one you do what we can what we are saying is the carbon treatment, okay. The carbon treatment B part, okay. So, this is the carbon treatment. You remove the soluble. So, what you are having is only the mother liquid free from any soluble organic compounds and insoluble uh, fraction. So, when you do that you send it to the evaporating crystaller which is a multiple effect evaporator, multiple effect MEF evaporator. Temperature well it is around 1000 degree Celsius you keep it. So, two processes are happening you have evaporation as well as crystallization. So, then uh, what you do is uh, you uh, this part what you do it is helping to get the when you keep it at 1000 degrees Celsius, it is just enough, it is below the transition of monohydrate Na2CO3 to anhydrous. So, when you keep this temperature, this phase transition is avoided, just it is below this transition. So, in this what happens? The monohydrate sodium carbonate crystals comes out. Then what you do? You do a centrifugation. Okay. So, crystals is formed here. So, crystals is formed. So, you do centrifugation. The crystal crystals, you do a centrifugation, the crystals and then you have the mother liquid. So, mother liquid is again sent back, it is sent back to the crystallizer. Okay. So, once you send back to the crystallizer, then what you have is the crystals, you dry them and then actually what you do is that uh, you have to dehydrate at 1506 degree Celsius. Okay. Then you get for shipping and finally, you get sodium carbonate. So, if you can see the process has many steps, 
The important step is the calcination step and then dissolution in water and some soda ash mother liquid. So, you can take some soda ash mother liquid get there so to make it more soluble the fraction soluble fraction to be more. Do a clarification and filtration step you remove the soluble or insoluble part the soluble part is the soluble organic part not the soda ash that you remove insoluble part also you remove do a carbon treatment activated carbon treatment on the filtered liquid then the crystallization then centrifugation separate the crystals and you get the sodium carbonate. So, this is the monohydrate process. In the sesquicarbonate process same thing exactly the same thing only thing is here what you do is you throw air after you crush you dissolve. Here the dissolver here if I want to write down this this is something like you can say this is your wet calcination wet calcination. So, earlier it was dry calcination what is the difference between there is no temperature and pressure effect is there you just add some third component let us say some glycols mixture of glycol and water so that this is reduced ok. Then you do the same thing you do with the clarification filtration carbon treatment. So, use the activated carbon to remove the uh, carbon part of the soluble impurities and also you remove the insoluble part from clarification which we did in the previous monohydrate process the process means filtration. Once you do a filtration you have the only the filtration that is the filtrate unit containing the soda ash you do for cooling crystallization. So, in the cooling crystallization you should see that the temperature is below 400 degrees Celsius it has to be cooled to 400 degrees Celsius. Then what you will do what happens is you will have sodium sesquicarbonate crystals you will get the sodium crystals. So, this is different in the monohydrate monohydrate. So, obviously, sodium say this is separate out the centrifugation and the mother liquid is again sent back to the dissolution process again it is calcined again it is calcined is centrifuged calcined this calcination takes place at 200 2000 degrees Celsius. So, you remove the water content you cool it and ship is also sodium carbonate. So, this is another method. So, it, it takes care of the wet calcination earlier it was the dry calcination these are the basic difference between these two processes. So, now we come to our main process flow sheet which is called the solvase process. Now, in the solvase process we take salt and limestone as raw material so which is easily available salt means I would say it is a brine solution. The procedure employs sodium chloride to give sodium ions and calcium carbonate to give carbonate ions ok. So, the uh, reactant is from sodium chloride and sodium carbonate. So, three different products are formed the light sodium carbonate which is called the light ash, the granular sodium carbonate, the heavy ash and the refined sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, there are three classes of product which are formed from this process. So, let us see what are the reaction. The reaction as you know what the overall reaction if I want to write down is very simple. So, what you have is only you have the sodium chloride if I want to write it in a balanced form aqueous form then you have the calcium carbonate if I go strictly by the raw material this is a solid. So, this will give you Na2CO3 which is a solid and calcium chloride which is in the aqueous phase. Looks very simple this particular process. So, it I have balanced this, but it is not that easy to do this type of reaction. Why? There are two issues involved. These two do not react with each other, these two they will never react with each other, but the opposite is true. So, these two may react to give this. So, it means you have to find a alternative manner. So, what is the alternative manner? Alternative manner is combine these two. So, what do you do is you have to add heat, you have to add if I want to put it in the forward direction not the reverse direction, you have to provide it is highly endothermic. So, you have to put the heat
so how do you get the heat required so the heat required is usually produced by burning coke okay so let us see then because of these issues so it is not easy to do a direct reaction even though it is the overall reaction but they do it in several steps solvase process so in the first step what so if i want to write down step 1 so you have the ammoniated brine when i say ammoniated brine it means the brine water and ammonia they are mixed together in the aqueous phase so there is ammoniated brine this ammoniated brine is made to react with carbon dioxide so do you have the nacl in the aqueous phase you react it with ammonia plus water which is again in the liquid phase this you react with the carbon dioxide gas CO2 gas okay so this this part these three parts is called as ammoniated brine okay this ammoniated brine is done in a separate column it is made to react with carbon dioxide in what is called as a solvate tower this solvate tower it is a reversible reaction it will produce a salt which is called ammonium chloride NH4Cl okay this ammonium chloride is again in the aqueous phase and you have this sodium bicarbonate in the solid phase okay sublimated brine is made to contact with carbon dioxide these are called as solvase tower the entire reaction takes place in the solvase tower in the industry this is close to 25 meters in height and this is the main unit for production of soda ash okay now important aspect is you see these are reversible reactions so all the ammonia is produced within the reaction and consumed within the reaction there is no ammonia to be taken out from outside supplied from outside so there's two cycles one is regeneration of co2 this is co2 cycle another is regeneration of ammonia this is the ammonia cycle so let us see with the co2 what happens so co2 is usually found out from this if you take limestone and heat it up you get select lime and co2 okay okay so this is in solid phase and this is the gas phase so this CO2 is then consumed in the Solvay's main reaction. So the issue is with this reaction if I want to say in this reaction is at low temperature at low temperature NaHCO3 is less soluble is less soluble is less soluble than NH4Cl than NH4Cl so because of this it can be easily crystallized if it is less soluble than ammonium chloride it can be easily crystallized so it is crystallized out so what happens if this is crystallized NHCO3 so one of the product is taken out so it means the reaction moves towards the forward direction so forward direction hence is enhanced so forward reaction is enhanced forward reaction enhances so you take it out so because of these two reasons this becomes a step one process okay the next step what happens so you heat up this sodium bicarbonate NaHCO3 is in the solid phase to get the desired product Na2CO3 plus Na2CO3 as solid then CO2 as gas and also water as gas because it is heated so it will be steam to be generated so that is why it is gas now the calcium oxide if you notice we got this I am just writing it again COCO3 
So, this calcium oxide actually combines with water which is solid is a liquid to form calcium dihydroxide ok. This is then used to regenerate used to regenerate ammonia. How does it do it? So, this calcium hydroxide what it will do is calcium hydroxide will react with the NH 4 C L which has been formed in the previous reaction in the Solvay's tower which is in the aqueous phase. It will produce calcium chloride in the aqueous phase plus NH 3 the gaseous phase or it is in the aqueous phase actually not gaseous and water. So, if I want to balance it out it will be 2 here and then it will be 2 times of ammonia here and 2 times of water here. So, now you see the calcium hydroxide which is formed converts the ammonium chloride to ammonia gas. So, this ammonia gas is then recycled. So, this completes the entire ammonia recycling cycle and carbon dioxide cycle is recycled because calcium carbonate generates carbon dioxide and then again carbon dioxide is reacting in the solvage tower and is consumed. So, this is the way it is recycled. So, the entire steps has two things one is the ammonia cycle another is the carbon dioxide cycle. So, there all is consumed inside all is produced as well as consumed inside in this ammonia produced plus consumed ok. But only with carbon dioxide cycle CO2 you require the raw material that is calcium carbonate from outside. So, this is the difference. So, let us see the process flow sheet what happens. So, before that we do a summary. So, in the ammonia absorber the brine solution is combined with ammonia. So, the sodium chloride plus ammonia plus water that is called the ammoniated brine and in the carbonation towers carbon dioxide is combined with this salt and ammonia to produce ammonium bicarbonate and then sodium bicarbonate and ammonium chloride. So, it means it will produce ammonium bicarbonate and ammonium chloride ok. So, the less soluble sodium bicarbonate because at low temperature it is less soluble it is separated from the solutions ammonium chloride via filtration. So, what is the raw material finally by product we are having is calcium chloride ok. So, this calcium chloride is the only by product which you have to remove. So, that is the only by product. So, uh, in other cases there were such other by product were very difficult to handle but the calcium chloride you can easily filter off and then use for several other purpose. The sodium carbonate in the last step is heated to 175 degrees Celsius in rotary dryer in order to produce light soda ash while the carbon dioxide is then recycled. Light soda ash is less thick than the natural substance because the release of carbon dioxide leaves gaps in the sodium carbonate crystals. The glass industry uses dense soda ash which is produced by adding water. So, if you add water with sodium carbonate and then drying. So, what happens is this will have a similar size to that of sand. The ammonium chloride solution is transferred to ammonia steel where ammonia is then collected and recycled ok. So, you see that all the ammonia which is generated is formed from the ammonium chloride. The ammonium chloride reacts with calcium hydroxide to form the ammonia then carbon dioxide and the remaining calcium chloride ok. So, calcium chloride here is the only byproduct. So, this is the process. So, you have the limestone and kiln coming here. So, you have uh, this no this is if I want to write down here COCO3 gives COO plus CO2. So, COA comes here. So, CO2 enters to the compressor, it is compressed and sent to the solvage tower. And what do we have here in the brine? In the brine, what we have is NaCl plus H2O plus ammonia. Okay. This is called the ammoniated brine, this is coming inside. So, this is where the main reaction takes place, which is the I have told you NaCl, H2O, NH3 plus CO2. So, what you have here is primarily the reaction products, which is ammonium chloride and 
sodium bicarbonate. You do a filtration, what you do? You send this ammonium chloride here, NH4Cl from the filtration and then make it react with calcium hydroxide. So, you will have this reaction happening here NH4Cl plus CaOH2, you get here CaCl2 plus ammonia plus water. I am not balancing this out. So, the ammonia which is given here is actually sent here NH3. So, now you see uh, if you see now this NH3 goes here again it enters here. So, this is your NH3 cycle the ammonia cycle here. Okay. Ammonia is produced here and what you have here is downwards is the CaCl2 plus water. So, this is the byproduct this we have to remove. So, this is the solvate tower. So, this NaHCO3 then it is heated. So, if it if it is heated this is formed to Na2CO3 plus CO2 plus H2O plus CO2 plus. So, that is why this CO2 escapes here then the remaining you form the light ash. So, you calcine it. So, separate these soda ash and light ash, carbon dioxide you send up, light ash you move ahead, go with the monohydrate mixer, add water, you more fine crystals, then you do a calcination and remove the water molecules, this is called the heavy ash. So, light ash is formed here, when you add water and monohydrate mixture, do a calcination you get heavy ash. So, you have light ash and heavy ash formation. Okay. This is was the entire solvase process which is used in industries worldwide. So, if you see again CO2 here is consumed, is produced here again consumed here. So, this becomes the CO2 cycle, okay, the CO2 cycle. So, this is the lime dissolver, it means in this, this reaction is happening calcium hydroxide plus water to form CaOH2, this happens here. So, this is the entire reaction sequence which is occurring. So, what are the products? As I told you, it, you have the light sodium carbonate, the light ash, granular sodium carbonate, heavy ash and the refined sodium dihydrogen phosphate and what is the byproduct? It is only calcium chloride. So, what is light sodium carbonate or light ash used in? It is produced by heating the filtered sodium hydrogen carbonate which I just told you in the previous slide. It removes the water, we remove the water and carbon dioxide because we know these two are sent back carbon dioxide recyclable, it is sent back to the compressor and it is sent to the solvase tower. The product then becomes extremely fine white particle, the particle size is very less in the case of light ash. In the case of heavy ash, the monohydrate form of the sodium hydronate, you add water, you form monohydrate sodium carbonate, forms a slurry, then you heat it and get the anhydrous form which is having significant bigger crystal size. Crystals which are have a, it will process particle size comparable to that of sand allowing them to easily combine with sand which is crucial for the production of glass. This is the primary application of heavy ash okay, to make the particle size similar to that of sand. And the remaining is a refined sodium hydrogen carbonate to produce this sodium carbonate, this type of sodium carbonate, the crude sodium hydrogen carbonate is filtered. So, you take the light ash, you filter it decarbonate it, you separate with decarbon, means separate out the carbon dioxide and then heat to remove the moisture. Then what you do, you react the same filtered solution with carbon dioxide, then what happens? You form sodium hydrocarbonate crystals. After centrifuging, the crystals are dried in a carbon dioxide environment. It is one of the purest industrial chemical and can be added to the food and medicine industry. Okay. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of solvates process? It can use a low quality brine, it consumes less electrical energy, it has less corrosion problems because acidity is reduced because of the ammoniated brine. There is no co-products, so only one product that is calcium chloride and no ammonia plant. As I told you, all the ammonia which is produced inside the solvate process is again consumed and again regenerated. So, there is no investment for ammonia production, but only issue is salt consumption is high on the downside the disadvantages 
the investment is more on the ammonia recovery facilities versus ammonia chloride crystallization units. So, more amount is invested on the ammonia recovery part, higher steam consumption because the for the calcination part and for the you know for the calcination of both I mean say the, cal the limestone as well as sodium bicarbonate the steam consumption is more. And then there is a problem of this calcium chloride brine stream this one calcium chloride the byproduct. So, not much use anywhere. So, that is why this is one of the grey area for the solvents process. Nevertheless, this is widely adopted on industries and this has been used then that is the prominent process. So, I will finish here. So, please go through these references the Christian themes article on sodium carbonates is in the encyclopedia of industrial chemistry. Then you can also visit this soda industries website this lentech.com. Then uh, if you want to go deeper into the reaction mechanism you go to this Pites book of chemical and process design handbook by McGraw Hill. Thank you. Thank you.